Welcome to our lecture online and now that we've learned all about the various phase changes and the heat involved and so forth, we're now ready to take a good look at what we call the phase diagram. So this is a basic phase diagram. Almost all substances follow the rules organized by this phase diagram. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. There's of course one big exception to this phase diagram, which is water. Water does not behave like this. And on the next video, I'll show you the difference between water and hmm, I'll take carbon dioxide so you can see how the difference uh, plays out. But here, this is what we have. Uh, we have pressure on the vertical axis, temperature on the horizontal axis, which means when you go to the right, the temperature increases. When you go from the bottom to the top, the pressure increases. So substances and, and elements do occur in nature in three different uh, phases. They have the solid phase, the liquid phase, and the vapor or gas phase. Now notice that there's a division here. We have a line that goes up here and then it splits up into two. Where it splits up right here, this is called the triple point. This is the point where at a particular temperature, so I can go T sub P, and at a particular pressure, P sub P. So the pressure of the uh, triple point Oh, I should go TT, triple point, I'll use the T and P sub T. So the temperature at the triple point and the pressure triple point at that particular pressure and temperature, all three phases of the substance can exist at the same time. I think for water, it's just about 0 0.06 degrees above freezing and in a very, very low uh, pressure, water can exist in the solid, the liquid and the vapor phase at the same time. And all substances have a triple point like that. Usually that's a fairly low pressure. There's also the critical point, which is the point at which the, uh, any amount of pressure applied can no longer take the vapor phase and turn it into a liquid phase. So when the temperature is beyond what we call the critical temperature, which is right here, if you draw a line straight down, right here we have the critical temperature. At this temperature, if you go above that, there's so much energy within the vapor of the gas, you can now no longer compress it and make it turn back into a liquid. It will remain in the gas. It could be a very pressurized gas. The molecules can be very close together, but they're so active, so energetic, that they will no longer molecularly adhere to one another to the various forces, the hydrogen bound forces or the van der Waals forces or so forth. All right. Now, what do these lines represent? Notice the line from there, from what we call the triple points, up at an angle. It typically is, is, has a positive slope like this. Notice the division line between liquid and solid. So when you go from right to left, we freeze things. When we go from left to right, we melt things. And that makes sense. Notice on the temperature. When you go from right to left, it goes from hot to cold. When you go cold enough, Below a certain point, you go from a liquid state into the solid state. When you heat it up, at some point, you go from a melting point uh, from a solid to a liquid. So you're melting the substance by increasing the temperature. Notice that at different pressures, the temperature which is occurs does change. The higher the pressure, the more temperature you need in order to melt a solid. And the higher the pressure, the warmer it can be before it begins to freeze. That's right. So now, uh, going over to the change between liquid and vapor, notice that at a particular temperature, if the temperature drops below a certain amount, it goes from a vapor phase to a liquid phase. And again, it depends on the pressure. The higher the pressure, the greater the temperature at which the vapor can exist. The lower the pressure, the lower the temperature at which the vapor can exist. So when you go from left to right, it's called vaporization. Temperature increases, liquids vaporize. When you go from right to left, temperature decreases. You go from a vapor back down to a liquid. And then let's see, do we have one more? Triple point right here, sublimation deposition, that's correct. So we have a, a, an occasion here if the, the pressure is low enough, a substance can actually sublimate, go directly from the solid to the vapor. That's called sublimation. Again, it occurs at a certain temperature and usually at very low pressures. And when the temperature drops far enough, it goes from higher temperature to lower temperature. It depositions itself. It goes again from the vapor form directly to the solid form. Again, that happens at very low temperatures. Now also, another thing you can look at this, uh, see on this diagram, let's say we have a vapor at a particular temperature and you keep increasing the pressure. So the pressure keeps increasing. Eventually, you will compress a vapor into a liquid when enough pressure is applied. Also, let's say you have a liquid and you apply enough pressure that can eventually turn into a solid. It can actually take a liquid and enough pressure and actually will solidify the liquid 
And uh, so that's with most, almost any substance will behave in this fashion. And that's why a phase diagram is drawn the way it does. It shows all the various cha phase changes from solid to vapor, from liquid to vapor, from liquid to solid, and it shows how the change in pressure can, go f can cause a substance to go from one phase to another. Also, it indicates where the triple point is and indicates where the critical point is. So that's what a phase diagram is. On the next video, I will show you the comparison between a phase diagram for carbon dioxide and a phase diagram for water, so you can see how the two substances behave quite differently with the same temperature and pressure.